I'm Luke and Lily, and I have been married for a solid 15 years. We're the proud parents of two amazing preteen daughters who still have a lot of love for their daddy. I consider myself an alpha male, someone who stands up for himself and doesn't tolerate any nonsense. Yet, I also treat my wife with the utmost care because I know she's a special treasure in our relationship. I support her taking charge and feeling empowered up to a certain point. Thanks to my genetic inheritance from my dad, I stand tall at 6 feet 6 inches, weighing 265 pounds of muscle. I have a commanding presence, but in reality, I'm a gentle giant unless provoked. Lily has witnessed this side of me a few times, particularly when we've been out, and she's been approached by some tough characters. Lily is a head-turner with ample curves, long, attractive legs, a slim waist, and a lovely face. Guys can't help but stare and flirt with her, which understandably gets under my skin. One of my shortcomings is my tendency toward jealousy, and once it flares up, it's not easy to control. I've worked on taming my anger over the years, but I haven't fully mastered it yet. Moving on, Lily has seen my jealous outburst twice in our 15 years together, and she's well aware of what I'm capable of. On two separate occasions, while we were out, some obnoxious guys persisted in trying to get her to dance after she had already declined, explaining she was with me. Both times they brushed aside her refusal and forcibly pulled her out of her seat right in front of me. I guess they assumed that since they were tough-looking guys, I would just sit there and allow them to take my wife. They made a colossal mistake. The first instance this occurred was when we were out enjoying a casual conversation about our daughters and having a good time. I was taken aback when this guy had the audacity to grab her hand and pull her out of the seating area. Without a moment's delay, I left my seat and positioned myself between him and my wife before he even set foot on the dance floor. In a swift move, I dislocated his shoulder and guided him back into our booth, where he writhed in pain. Lily and I then swiftly left the scene. Like I mentioned, I don't tolerate disrespect from anyone, and my main challenge is dealing with jealousy. This situation raises a question. Since she knows my nature, why would she allow this to happen? Even with my suspicions, my feelings for her hadn't wavered. Several unusual things were unfolding that hadn't been present during our 15 years of marriage, triggering my intuition. Her outfits and appearance underwent significant changes when the new boss took over at the office, and our intimate life suddenly took a positive turn with her now taking the initiative, a behavior she hadn't exhibited before. There was a surge in late-night text messages and more frequent late work meetings. Naturally, she had plausible explanations for everything, but my innate jealousy wasn't put at ease. For some reason, I instructed the private investigation firm not to share any information with me until they had completed their investigation. I hoped that I was just being an overly suspicious husband, and I didn't want things to change between us. After three months of investigation, I received a folder containing the news I had been dreading. I reviewed the video, audio, and photos, and then I informed my attorney, Mac, to proceed with the divorce papers and have them ready for me by Wednesday afternoon. My plan was to surprise them on their Thursday night date. While they believed I was out of town, I had something special in mind for the couple. It still surprised me how she could have thought she'd get away with this. Lily knows me better than anyone. She's aware of my intuition, determination, and how unforgiving I can be. She's witnessed my ruthlessness when I took over the company and decisively dealt with competitors. I now have a controlling interest in a sizable trucking company, and I've earned respect from truckers and teamsters, treating them fairly, and I know they would support me if I ever needed them. I've given Lily everything and always treated her exceptionally well, as if she were royalty, and she's fully aware of it. She praises me to her friends and family sharing how wonderful I am, and how I shower her with care, which she loves. Despite all this, a question keeps echoing in my mind, especially during these last few hours. Why? Why would she risk everything she has for a fleeting affair? Why would she jeopardize our relationship for a fling with her boss? 
the affair, why indeed? This is the most troubling question for me. Lily had always excelled as both a devoted mother and a loving wife, which is why this situation was particularly difficult to grasp. Our intimate life was active and fulfilling, though evidently not fulfilling enough. She managed the household responsibilities, while also holding a full-time position as an executive assistant at a local tech company. It's something I never would have imagined, that she would engage in an extramarital affair. Thursday night, the date I had orchestrated was fast approaching. I had everything organized, and one of my trusted contacts would be with me to hand over the folder. When the time was right, I arrived early, tipping the hostess generously and requesting a more private table for them. My clever wife was under the impression that I was away on a trip. On the audio recording, I overheard her telling her boss that she was available Thursday night if he still wanted to meet up. Naturally, this guy eagerly agreed and offered to plan everything. The private investigator agency had equipped me with software to install on Lily's phone, allowing me to obtain copies of her text messages and emails. This software also featured an audio recording function that could upload the recordings to a private server. On a Monday, I received a copy of the text he had sent to Lily, detailing the time he'd pick her up, the restaurant for their reservations, and the directive for her to dress provocatively for him. I was seething with anger after reading this, realizing how my soon-to-be ex-wife was behaving, not to mention the audacity of this guy to pick her up in our home. My plan was relatively straightforward. I would wait for the lovers to settle in with their initial drink. Then I would appear suddenly. That's when my performance would start, culminating in a subtle threat and the unexpected presentation of the divorce papers. My anger and thirst for revenge were growing stronger in my heart. I knew Lily wouldn't desire a divorce, because she truly loved me and our children. However, I was fully aware that what I was about to do would devastate her and alter her life forever. But at that moment, I didn't care. All I wanted was for her to experience some of the pain she had inflicted on me. Some might argue for forgiveness and letting go, especially for the sake of the children in our 15-year marriage. But did I mention that I'm a somewhat immature, jealous alpha male? There was no way I was going to tolerate another man being with my wife, only to keep her as my devoted partner. As much as I loved her and as much as it hurt, I knew I could never view or touch her in the same way again. I had both surveillance and support on standby, ready to inform me at the right moment. So on Thursday night, I received the signal that the couple was seated and had their drinks. I was prepared to confront them directly. Leaving my car, I entered the restaurant and exchanged a smile with the hostess. Taking a deep breath, I locked away my anger and proceeded with my plan. The couple was seated at their table and it was painful to see my beautiful wife wearing a provocative cocktail dress, highlighting her ample cleavage. This really angered me, especially because she had never dressed that way for me. I was puzzled and frustrated by this behavior. Why would she do this to me? It made no sense and was driving me crazy. It seemed she wanted to look appealing to her boyfriend for the night, which only fueled my anger. Approaching them from an angle, I moved to their table without them noticing as they were absorbed in each other romantically. Quite a sweet scene. Only when I pulled a chair from a nearby table did they become aware of my presence. The look on Lily's face was indescribable, a mix of surprise, fear, and guilt that I had never seen before. Her date remained clueless about the situation and didn't realize I was her husband. He simply stared at me with an annoyed expression. And so it began. Hey, Lily. Enjoying your date night? I asked, flashing a big smile. Hey there. What brings you here? I thought you were away tonight. My boss, Jeremy, asked me to have dinner to discuss some organizational changes. Why don't you join us? She replied in a calm, affectionate tone. She was really smooth. I had to give it to her. She was composed and quick on her feet. The drink I'd ordered before approaching the table arrived, and after brushing off Lily's lies, I raised a toast. Without addressing her question, I offered a friendly smile and said, 
let's raise our glasses for a little toast. Here's to an interesting night in new directions. After my toast, I turned to her boss with a smile. Jeremy, do you know what's kept Lily and me happily married for 15 years? Honesty and trust, plain and simple. Are you married, Jeremy? I already had all the information about him from the report. Yes, I've been married for 20 years, and I have four amazing kids ranging from 5 to 13 years old. I agree with you, Luke. Trust and honesty are crucial in our marriage too, Jeremy added. That's great to hear, Jeremy. Lily, do you share the same sentiment? I asked, fully aware that I was putting her in a tight spot. Yes, sweetheart, it's definitely a significant factor in our marriage, she confidently affirmed. After all, she had just mentioned that they were having a business dinner, so there was no reason for her to feel guilty or anxious. You see, Jeremy, our marriage is strong, and Lily knows how much I care for her and how far I go for her as long as she remains faithful. I observed them both squirm a bit as I took another sip from my glass. I kept playing the game. So how long have you guys been seeing each other? I asked casually, sporting a big grin. Lily seemed irritated, tried to regain control, and sounded defensive. Honey, this is a business meeting, and you're making things uncomfortable with my boss. Please don't let your jealousy hit the best of you. You know me better than that. Following Lily's lead, her date seized the chance to put me in my place. Indeed, Luke, this is purely a business dinner. I needed to discuss some upcoming changes, and that's why I met with Lily tonight. I apologize if you've misunderstood, my friend. I would never cross professional boundaries, especially with a married woman. I attempted to appear apologetic and responded, Oh, I'm sorry. So you're saying you've never taken my wife out on a date, and this is strictly a business dinner. You're right, Luke. There's absolutely nothing going on between us, he assured me. Lily, is that true? This is purely a business meeting and there hasn't been anything between you two before. I posed the question that would define our future, truth or deception. I already had a feeling about the answer before she even spoke. Absolutely, darling. It's only business meetings. I would never be involved with another man, especially not my own boss. Please don't act so immature, Lily protested. I apologize, Jeremy. My husband can be a bit jealous, but he knows how much I love him. She continued, lowering her head and playing the submissive role. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I do tend to get a little jealous. I mean, seeing you in that attractive dress, out with this handsome man, you can understand why I might feel this way, right? Jeremy gave her a friendly pat on the back, visibly relieved that she seemed to have fooled me. Look, no need to apologize. If my wife looked this stunning and was out with a stranger, well, I'm not sure how I'd react. With tensions eased, I signaled the man observing us from the bar. He approached our table, and as he handed me a thick folder, he swiftly departed. Everyone's attention shifted to him, and curious glances were exchanged between Lily and Jeremy. I began to lay out photos from the folder on the table. Just before placing the first photo down, I turned to Lily and spoke softly in a melancholic tone. Lily, you know I loved you with all my heart and was ready to give you everything. But you've discarded that love along with all the years of our marriage. You've hurt me deeply, and I'll never be able to forget those videos and the hurtful things you said about me on those recordings. Those memories will haunt me for the rest of my life. Thanks for that. I placed down the first 8 by 10 inches photo revealing Lily on her knees with Jeremy. The next picture showed him finishing on her face, and then there were several more, showing them in different, bah, positions. Lily let out a shocked gasp and covered her mouth with her hands. Jeremy was angry and demanded to know where I got those photos. I simply told him to be quiet. After arranging the photos, I took a moment to examine each one and offer comments. I'd say things like, Lily, you look quite alluring with that in your mouth, and Jeremy, you seem pretty satisfied in this picture. Looks like you're enjoying my wife, 
Lily was now openly crying and pleading with me to stop. Other diners were starting to look our way, so I tried to keep my voice down to avoid disturbing the whole restaurant. Lily realized how terrible the situation seemed, and she saw only one way out. I'm really sorry, baby. Can we please just leave and talk about what happened? It's not as it seems, she pleaded. I looked at her with a slightly amused expression and asked slowly, not as it seems. Are you going to keep lying to me, being deceitful? But let me stop you right there. Both of you should know that I've got hours of video, audio, text messages, emails, and photos. Lily, I have to admit, after seeing those videos, I never knew that side of you existed, that you could act in such a way. You never revealed that part of yourself to me, and that's painful. I've spent a lot of money in the past three months to gather this information, and it's all legally obtained. So trust me, I understand it all. As I put away the documents, I explained, now let me clarify why I'm here and what's going to happen tonight. I handed Lily the divorce papers and told her, Lily, it's over between us. You and I are finished. Your relationship with your boyfriend has ruined our marriage and my love for you. You've caused me a level of pain I've never felt before, and I won't be with you anymore. You'll sign this tonight. And my colleague at the bar is a notary who will witness your signature. If you don't sign tonight, I'll expose all the videos and audio to your parents. Our friends and your kids will learn about the kind of mother you've been. I've been fair in this divorce, but the girls will stay with me. There's no way my daughters will live with a cheating, disrespectful person like you. Jeremy, my buddy, I'd strongly recommend you get your girlfriend here to sign this before I walk out that door. Otherwise, I'll make sure to hand over all the evidence to your wife and the higher ups at your workplace. By the time I'm done, your job will be gone and I'll be persuading your wife, Sarah, to give you the boot and make sure you're financially ruined for a good while. I really don't want to go down that path. So just work on getting her to sign those divorce papers. After that, you can have my soon-to-be ex-wife. I want nothing to do with this woman ever again. My words hit her hard, and the idea of losing her daughters was another blow she couldn't bear. Tears streamed down her face, and her boyfriend appeared panicked. Lily pleaded with me to stop and reconsider, offering the usual lines, the typical excuses. It's not what it looks like. Let me explain. I'll make it right. It was just a mistake. Please forgive me. Blah, blah, blah. She ended by saying, Luke, I love you, and I don't want this. Please give me one more chance. Ignoring her, please, I got up and announced, I'm heading to the restroom, and when I return, those papers better be signed. If they're not, I promise you won't even grasp the level of chaos I'll unleash into your lives. I left Lily in tears and her lover in shock. He knew Jeremy would do whatever it took to get her to sign those papers and save his own skin. During my absence, Jeremy acted swiftly. He understood that he couldn't afford to let his wife and his job see those videos, and he was determined to do whatever it took to avoid that scenario. He needed to persuade Lily to put her signature on the divorce papers, and he spoke up. Lily, just sign them for now. Then ask him to hold on to them for a week. That'll give you a chance to talk and convince him of your love. Promise to go to therapy, do whatever it takes, but make him wait a week. Tell him it's the least he can do after 15 years of marriage for one mistake. It's our best shot right now. I can tell he's serious. And if he has those videos and audio recordings, we're both in trouble. I don't want a divorce, he said. Lily cried out. Believe me, if you get him to wait, I'm confident you can salvage your marriage. Think about our kids. You wouldn't want to lose them, right? Tears welled up again. And after a few moments, I returned to the table. So, have you put your signature on those papers yet? With the most sorrowful expression I'd ever witnessed, she locked eyes with me and said, Honey, I'll do whatever you want, including signing these papers. But could you please give me a week before you make any final decisions? 
could you let me come back home with you and grant me that time? After fifteen years together, can I have one week to be with our daughters and talk? Can you please give me that chance? I remained quiet, gazing into her eyes for a while, contemplating her plea. Ultimately, I relented and responded, despite the fact that you deserve my anger for what you've done and how you've shattered our marriage for this jerk, I'll grant you that. You can come back home, and I'll give you one week before I hand the paperwork over to my lawyer. You'll stay in one of the guest bedrooms. I don't want you near my bed during this time. Now go ahead and sign them so I can get out of here. She put her signature on the papers, and I placed them into the folder. I stood up, ready to leave. Before I walked away, I took her hand in mine and she smiled momentarily until she realized I was taking off her wedding rings. I tucked them into my pocket and then removed the ring I had worn for our fifteen-year marriage. I held it up, catching her gaze, and nonchalantly tossed it into her glass of wine. The expression on her face gave me a tiny bit of satisfaction. When her tears started flowing again, I couldn't help but smile slightly, knowing she was beginning to understand my pain. I turned to Jeremy and said, Well, you jerk, she's all yours now. Do whatever you please with her. I'm leaving. But remember this, Jeremy. You messed around with my wife, destroyed our marriage, and put so much at risk, including my children's perception of their mother. Your fate is in my hands, and I'm holding your future. Don't mess with me. You're lucky I didn't follow through with my original plans for you. This isn't the end between us, you scumbag. You'll be hearing from me soon. Got it. Jeremy nodded quietly as I stood, towering over him. It seems I may have thrown a wrench in their evening plans. I wonder if they're still in the mood for their little escapade after I'm gone. As I began to leave, Lily grabbed onto my arm and pleaded, Luke, can I please come back home with you? I just want to be with you. Please. I pulled my arm away as if it had been burned and retorted, Screw you. I don't want to be seen with you. You're his plaything tonight. I'll see you after he's done using you. Whether it's tonight or tomorrow, doesn't matter to me anyway. You have one week. You disgust me. And I'm ashamed to have ever been your husband. All right, yes, I was being a jerk. But honestly, I didn't give a damn. I felt like I had kept my jealousy and anger under control. I was proud that I managed to suppress all that pent-up rage. I did give her a week. Let's see what unfolds. Update the following morning, I heard her return home about an hour later that night, and to her credit, she went straight to the guest room. She must have realized that I wouldn't be in the mood for a calm conversation that night. We crossed paths the next morning in the kitchen. As I came down for some coffee, still fueled by a desire for revenge, I kept up my rude attitude and remarked, Good morning. You know what, wife? How's my unfaithful partner doing today? She visibly flinched and lowered her gaze to her coffee, then offered the exact words every cheating wife uses when caught and is desperate to salvage the marriage. Honey, we need to talk. Listen, there's no need to talk about this. Lily. I know what you've been up to. I know how long you've been doing it. I'm aware of all the things you told him about me and our marriage. I witnessed you doing things with him that you never did with me. I continued. I saw how you dressed to impress him. I know he's apparently more impressive. I heard that countless times in those videos. You lied, hid things, cheated, and made me look like a fool. I can't believe you were that foolish. If I'm overlooking something, then we can talk. Otherwise, I've got nothing to say. The fool's me, not you. I don't know why I let it happen. You gave me everything I ever wanted. And I love you. No matter what you heard in those videos, you need to know that hurting you was never my intention, and I never wished for you to find out, she managed to say amidst her tears. That's exactly the issue, Lily. You never wanted me to find out. You wanted to keep it hidden and keep lying and sneaking around with your lover behind my back. That's the real issue here, Lily. I can forgive infidelity. We're all human and make mistakes. But this wasn't a mistake. 
You chose this, and you intended to keep it hidden, and continue lying, cheating, and keeping your relationship concealed. I do love you, Lily. But like Tina Turner sings, what's love got to do with it? My trust is shattered, and I'm questioning if I ever truly knew you. How many other men were there? How many times did you sleep with your lover and then come back to our bed with his traces? I'm utterly disgusted. I can barely even talk. I shared, my voice heavy with emotion. Now, sobbing, she finally grasped the weight of what I was feeling and comprehended the enormity of her actions. She had no justifications or excuses left, only an admission of her wrongdoings. All right, I admit it, and I'm filled with self-disgust. There was no one else involved, and I know no matter what I say, you won't be able to forgive me for what I've done. But I don't want us to get divorced. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to salvage our relationship. I think I need therapy, and maybe we can go together to address what's wrong with me. Please don't abandon me. I paused for a moment before responding. Lily, you can absolutely seek counseling. Work on yourself, and I'll stand by your side. But I can't be with a woman who could so easily throw me away. Your actions and words showed me your true feelings, and I can't imagine living with someone who harbors those emotions toward me. I'm aware there are other women out there who would value being with me. You had your opportunity and you let it slip away. Take this week to spend time with the girls and find a way to explain your departure to them. I won't speak ill of you, but you must be honest with them about why you're leaving. In our divorce agreement, I've granted you complete access to the girls whenever you want, but they'll primarily live with me. If you continue behaving recklessly and setting a poor example for them, I'll have to make your visits more challenging. Understand? I'll treat you better than you might deserve, and I'll help you maintain your relationship with the girls. However, I have two questions I need answers to. Listen to my questions carefully and contemplate before responding. First, why did you risk everything for this? My second question, was it worth it? I then called Jeremy the next Monday and arranged to meet him for lunch on Wednesday. After he convinced me it was a good idea to meet up, I expressed my frustration to Jeremy about how he wrecked my marriage and how close he came to facing severe consequences. Then I laid out my alternative plan for him. Over lunch, I talked to him about the impact of his actions on many people due to his involvement with a married woman. I shared my expectations for him to make things right. Part of this involved him covering Lily's rent and car payments for the next three years. I believed he should experience some discomfort for what he did and detailed how this plan would operate. I'll send you the payment details for you to set up automatic transfers. This is your form of punishment, and believe me, you're getting off lightly. Even though I'm done with my cheating wife, I still care for her and want her to be looked after. Since you're the reason for all of this, you will comply with my terms. This arrangement will help Lily get back on her feet after I kick her out. I don't care how you manage it, but if you don't follow through, I'll ensure you lose your job and your wife. Sarah learns about your affair. As a bonus, you get to stay alive. This is all because you had to involve yourself with a married woman. Jerks like you need to realize there are consequences for your actions. Instead of wrecking families, why not pursue single women? Your actions were truly despicable, Jeremy. I treated Lily decently, allowing her to see the kids and maintain their relationship. But my respect and trust were never fully restored. Jeremy kept up with the monthly payments, always mindful of my threat. Lily struggled to provide satisfactory explanations for her actions. She admitted that her cheating and dishonesty weren't worth it and regretted her choices, yet she couldn't pinpoint why she did it. Now she lives alone without a boyfriend and the love she once had. I could have ruined her completely, but losing her family and my love was vengeance enough. Despite her counseling efforts, the why question remained unanswered. The best she could come up with was, I don't know why. It just happened. It wasn't about you or our marriage. Because I genuinely loved you and was content with our bed life and the life we shared. It was something new and thrilling. I messed up. 
I couldn't hold back. Lily, if you were content, why did you dress provocatively and wear sexy outfits for him? Why would you do things for him that you never did for me? Maybe if you had put that effort into our relationship, we wouldn't be in this mess. It just happened isn't a real answer. You repeatedly engaged in it and dressed to excite him every time that you claimed to love me. I hope one day you can give me a genuine explanation. Thanks to everyone who took the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share your thoughts on the events in the comments below. Take care.